think. Yeah. Is that the one yeah. you were at? Yeah, I went to the one in Atlanta um, in August. Uh, and so that was really good. Yeah, the um, that was powerful just being there and things. Um, yeah, I was happy to be there. And I, I first came across his things through YouTube. And mm -hmm. so actually I saw, I think it was your video was the first one. And so uh, when I saw your video, um, it seems like Google and like the, the internet algorithm is really trying to push this transgender agenda. Yeah. And so when you finally come across like a, a variation in the algorithm where you see like people who have gotten out of like the whole ideology, it seems like, like it really uh, made a lot of sense. So um, one of the main issues with like with our healthcare system is that if you go to them and basically say, I've got confusion about my gender, mm -hmm. there's going to be like a lot of it, like, and then you just insist that like you take the path of transitioning there's going to be like zero resistance essentially. And so um, I just, yeah, like, um, so going back, um, yeah, so I was, I went to Daniel's uh, event and so that was great. And I think it, it just kind of ultimately for people who've got the, the issues that we're talking about, mm -hmm. we really need like a community that can support us and uplift us. Um, because it's it's just like a cross to carry. Um, it really is, yeah. And you just need people to help carry that cross, as Jesus says in the Bible. Like, if you uh, people who don't carry that cross can't be my disciples. So, um, and um, I just find like an interesting link. Like, whenever I tried pursuing like the gender transition route, it seemed like my standard of like behavior was also like oh, so if this is okay, then what else is okay, you know, like, right now I can just, like, be attracted to whoever I want, like, I can date whoever I want now, it doesn't really matter, man or woman, because if I'm transgender, then what's the point, and then it, it just, like, I fell into a relativistic, like, there is no more object, like, the second that I started transitioning, it's like the objective truth was lost, essentially, in my life, like, um, it seemed like a lot of my sanity kind of, and my ability to connect with God was greatly reduced. Like if I, yeah. if like my connection with God was like a Wi-Fi connection, whenever I tried to transition or like take hormones and and like dress and everything like that as the opposite right. gender, um, it's like my Wi-Fi connection with God just like decrease, and it's harder to hear God, and it's harder to really feel confident that I'm saved. Basically, like the best sensation, I would say, like confidence of being saved is like a great metric for like myself and like I feel a lot more confident that I'm saved when I deny myself and take up my cross with this gender issue yeah I agree with everything you said especially about how heavy it is as a cross for us to carry coming out of that lifestyle nobody else except for us and the Lord would understand you know um and I have actually been really led by the Lord for the past couple of years to one day create hopefully a community of people like us who are in our shoes, who can just be there for each other and help others um, around the world one day, you know, who are seeking freedom from that lifestyle as well. Cause it really, I don't know what it is about this lifestyle or that lifestyle that seems more difficult to me personally than any other sin in my life, whether it was drugs or alcohol or pornography, leaving the LGBT lifestyle was the hardest thing. And I don't know why I'm still praying about that and trying to figure it out, but I do think it has a lot to do with identity. And, you know, once we lose that for me, I lost it at a young age. Um, but once we lose that, we're just sort of like coasting through life with no idea who we are. And we're like blaming God for it because we believe that we were born that way when we weren't, you know, and then you, again, like you said, you have the whole world pushing this agenda on you, telling you to be one way or telling you to be anything but yourself and it just confuses you way more so I totally feel you on that and then with the hormones that I agree because when I transitioned I thought that I was finally you know starting to be the person that I was always meant to be you know I thought that I was always meant to be a male and that I was you know on the path to discovering who I was but 
I always tell people it didn't matter whether I was male or female. I still felt depressed and suicidal. Like none of my problems went away. I was just dealing with my problems as a dude now, you know? So it really didn't change anything. And I would always be reminded deep down that I really wasn't male. You know, even if I stayed that way forever, I would have scars. I wouldn't be able to produce sperm for my wife. Like it just, it would be a mess my whole life, you know? So it really wasn't worth it. Yeah, yeah. And uh, like, just for me too, like I've always had this deep down, I know that I'm male no matter what I, when I try to transition or where uh, present as the opposite gender, like it, um, it just has a sensation of a masquerade, Mm -hmm. like, like a performance, like a theater act. And that's kind of what I felt like when I'd go home or whatever and be sitting in my bed, I'd be like, it just kind of feels like a masquerade. Like I don't, um, it just felt like very unbiblical, basically everything. Like it's just very not biblical or like, um, Paul talks about like the qualities of the Holy spirit, like peace, like kindness, and just like well-being and things like that. Like I didn't, I didn't feel that sensation when I was, um, going through like the whole gender thing like I the fruits of the spirit you mean yeah yeah the fruits of the spirit yeah right yeah it's the reason why you didn't feel that is because you weren't living in the spirit you were living in the flesh and I agree with that 100 percent. you know we're all seeking peace and love and you know just true serenity but without the Lord we'll never find that you know yeah I think our, our saying our sanity lies in our sanctity so if we if we don't have our sanctity in place then it's hard to have our sanity like our sanity follows our sanctity Mm -hmm. so like you like i've been in the hospital four times in the past three months like i've finally been coming out of like the gender stuff but yeah um i've I've been in that in and out of the hospital a lot a lot of it was suicidal um and i actually had like a sleep paralysis one night when there was like it wasn't even a dream like there literally was a demon like sitting on top of me like it wasn't even a dream like i just opened my eyes and in paralysis and a demon was sitting on me and I prayed and it went away but like it was it was like the scariest thing in my life and so um I've just had like multiple confirm like spiritual confirmations like crazy things happen and so um yeah just my main I always notice too is that my mental health just goes really far down whenever I go through the gender transition especially with the hormones there's got to be some component with that um I like I go to the hospital a lot and just like I um I I noticed like with your history of going to the hospital and things like um like just you and I like both just being in the hospital like I'm just like why am I here and then kind of comes back (laughs) to just like all of the gender stuff and like once I get stabilized I'm like okay like I don't need to do this anymore and Mm -hmm. it's just finding like a a healthy community and things yeah and Recently, I've been learning a lot about the spiritual realities of homosexuality and where it comes from. Like growing up, nobody, honestly, so far, I don't think anybody's been able to say how somebody becomes lesbian or transgender or gay or where it comes from. We all just believe that we're born that way and that you can't change it. And that's that, you know, I've heard DNA and I've heard science, but I've never really heard of a biblical or spiritual explanation before and so recently in my life while I've been praying and you know doing whatever I've been given revelation and I'm really excited to share that on YouTube with everybody because the whole world needs to hear it but it is absolutely a spiritual thing and I know it has a lot to do with identity so like for example I was four when I realized I liked women but it's in the moment when you agree with it you know, because there's a reason why not everybody is gay, you know, they're straight people. Why is not everybody homosexual? Because not everybody has accepted the lie of the enemy. And you know, as well as I do, that Satan comes to tempt us and try to get us to sin. But we don't have to listen to that voice, you know. So when it comes to identity and becoming a homosexual or whatever the world wants to call it, it's just down to identity, you know. And as a child, we don't know better. We don't know what we're feeling. We don't know if it's right or wrong. We just do whatever we feel because we're kids. And that's why the enemy attacks us when we're young. So for me, I saw a girl and I had these feelings and I didn't think, oh, I should reject these feelings or I should renounce it or pray. I thought, 
okay, the, I'm just feeling it and it's okay and whatever. And the world tells us it's okay, you know? Um, but I will definitely talk about that more because everybody needs to hear it. And then with the hormones, you mentioned how, you know, when you were in the mental hospitals and stuff, you experienced some things, but you were just wondering why you were there and how when you were on hormones, it just decreased everything. Again, that's a super spiritual thing. When I had backslid into that lifestyle a while ago, I remember I was off hormones. I haven't taken hormones for about a year and a half. But when I backslid, I was growing facial hair again. I was growing like excessively. Everything was coming back. My voice was getting deeper and I wasn't taking any hormones. So it's a spirit behind homosexuality. There's oh, really? So wait, you weren't even taking hormones? No. Hey, you just no. backslid like you, you assented okay. to whatever was going on. And then all this stuff started happening. Right. I went back into a relationship with a female, a homosexual relationship for a little while. And I didn't take hormones because I wasn't trying to identify as a male. I just went back into a homosexual relationship. Mm -hmm. And while I was in this relationship for a little while, um, trying to figure out my whole life and, you know, falling and stumbling, I was growing facial hair and my voice was getting deeper and I wasn't taking hormones and everybody in my church noticed it. Everybody kept noticing and I didn't notice until they pointed it out. And that's how I knew this is a demonic, like this is a spirit. Um, yeah. when I was female to male transgender I identified myself as James um, and so I believe that when people accept this new identity that the enemy has pushed into their lives for you I don't know what your name was or whoever you know I believe that once we say to ourselves I am James Harley or I am Rebecca Black or whatever I believe that that gives the demon a legal right to you to say, okay, they have chosen to identify with me. Now I'm attached to this person. Right. It's like a, yeah, it's a obsession or a possession kind of like thing. a parasite, like a host, yeah. you know? Yeah. So yeah. you've, you've submitted to the, and so uh -huh. you get the, it's kind of like, yeah, selling your soul. So you like, uh, you get like that, whatever it's like witchcraft where you just get this, yeah like false benefit of yeah so it's 100 um, percent. yeah I, I see where you're going with that yeah and um i because you i was good i was gonna wait to talk about this later on a different video but since you mentioned the sanity thing i have been blessed with this revelation of what this spirit looks like okay and i don't know if i might have somebody draw it or whatever so i can visualize it to everybody but this spirit behind LGBT lifestyle or sexual immorality, of course, there's a Jezebel spirit, but this, is, this spirit is like a puppet to Jezebel or something. But this spirit looks like a, a clown. It's like gray and it's scaly and it has the, I don't know, like a joker smile on its face. It has these yellow eyes. It's got a pointy clown nose. And I believe that that's where that also comes from for us in particular, we literally feel like we're losing our marbles. I felt crazy because everybody told me I was crazy, you know? No, yeah, like I was normal, like um, there's a rapper, his name's XX Tentacion. And uh -huh. I believe that he had like some, yeah, maybe rest in peace, but I, I thought he had some connection to that or some connection to whatever demonic because mm -hmm. him and like Juice World have these very apathetic lyrics. And I, I just felt like, oh, like my life is just so hard. Like I've got this thing on my back. Like I'm just going to basically live in apathy. And so yeah, it's just like living under the, it's it's like you just accept like defeat. It's like this white flag kind of syndrome where you're just like, um, you just like basically accept like whatever is happening. But yeah, like the, the sanity thing is just like, um, no, I definitely know it's like a spiritual thing because I, mm -hmm. I also there. So there's a thing called a subcubus where you can have like a spiritual life. And so yes. I wasn't, I, I studied in India for a semester for my university. And so I, I had like the Holy Spirit come, but then I also got confused and maybe thought it was a Hindu thing. So I, yeah. I got into all this Hinduism and everything. And one of my um, people I knew, he taught me basically how to connect with this spirit. And so I, um, 
and just like all this this hindu stuff basically yeah. and it it totally like just wrecked me spiritually and so i've i've been to like most like i've just had been like to prayer groups and things and prayed over me and things because it's just like it um luckily i've it only happens when you ascent to it but it's still like it's a lot of like uh stuff you just have to like peel off your body spiritually because it's just so potent yeah, yeah that um that was really dangerous and i just um there's all these like re uh, spiritual realities that uh exist mm -hmm. like there's a reason why black masses and satanic rituals and satanic rites and everything exists because the opposite is also true like where jesus exists so mm -hmm. uh, all these all this music and like a little nas and all those things like it yeah um we don't our, our schools don't teach us how to handle these like how in hogwarts they have like a defense against the dark arts there's no like defense against the dark arts for like children it's just oh here's it's, like here's your phone you know yeah unfortunately that's the case for a lot of religious families i'd say especially westernized christianity you know like i grew up in a religious home and my parents didn't know about the spiritual realm they didn't understand the holy spirit because they grew up in religion not relationship but if they had grown up learning about jesus and learning about prayer and about the spiritual realities then they would have raised us knowing as children how to fight our battles and how to pray like daniel his little girls they be casting out demons and praying in tongues you know like that's the proper way to raise your kids up in the faith you know but unfortunately most people don't grow up in that type of home even if they are christian you know their parents don't know that stuff so otherwise we'd probably be way different now um i did want to ask you what exactly happened like how you went from you know you were identifying as female but how did you like what happened to you to make you go back to being male <laughs> um i would say the the main thing was my sanity was just getting destroyed like um yeah like my my overall like level of psychological well-being was just getting annihilated like yeah I just couldn't like reconcile the world, like reality anymore. Um, that, and then just like, like ping ponging back and forth, like realizing there's something else going on here. And whenever I ascend to the gender stuff, all of a sudden it gets into a very hypersexualized thing where it's like, oh, I need to be like in a very hypersexualized relationship with someone, or I need to be very promiscuous. Performance, like, like you said yeah there isn't yeah. like a chastity associated with any of like the gender stuff at all like it's it's always it's always like very desire focused like it's um it's it's like a philic thing or it's like a it's a yeah there's like a, a not like a fetish thing but yeah maybe like a bit like a fetish like a desire attachment thing and so it right um it needs to be fought in multiple levels it needs to be like a holistic approach uh yeah. how long were you yeah Sorry, keep going, was it? okay um how long were you in the lgbt for like when did you realize that you start having like same-sex attractions and stuff um I, i'd say i was more so bi than anything i've always been attracted to women um um but i i i think when i thought that i'd identify as female that like if, oh okay then like i can just be attracted to male and so i realized i think it's more bisexuality yeah but it started in 2016 uh so I met with my like my spiritual director the other day and he's like, um, I noticed like these problems weren't really around when I had a sense of community and belonging. It's when I'd be outside of a community or a belonging, like after I graduated from college outside of my community and uh, came back and everything and just was kind of on my own is when these desires and the sensations came. And so uh, when I wasn't around others or when I was by myself for extended periods of time, is when this all this stuff just started popping up and right uh, that's that's when it and then when that kind of initiated and then uh so when i don't have like a sense of belonging or identity or yeah like that that's when like it really started being afflicted by the enemy mm -hmm. and then just breaking free from it basically it just like like you said like how you like how God had that revelation to you that like you're cutting off bloodlines by engaging in this behavior. You and saw my movie? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Wow. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. So I, um, yeah, I've, I've read a lot of, like, I watched a lot of your things. And so I, yeah. um, 
honestly, it's just at the end of the day, it's like, it's being honest with yourself. Like that's what everyone who, who is in this group LGBT spectrum mm-hmm. is, is needs to be honest with themselves. Like, don't lie to me that, that it's your identity or something. Like you just need to be honest with yourself. Cause the only one right. it's like a teacher, you know, it's like a counselor. Like the only one that's um, gaining is like, only when you're like when you're lying no one's like benefiting from that so right um like the more you lie the the harder it is to like love too yeah and also just like what love is and it's it's harder to love too and all those other things and just um like wanting like the pursuit of truth is also just a big one for me like i want to pursue truth and i felt like this whole gender masquerading thing it just doesn't feel like i'm pursuing truth so right. And I just, I just missed like being Ben, like being me. Like I, it, it felt like I was just like, like society in 2016. I was like, here's this gender ideology, ad- adopt it. And right. like, I was kind of at a weak point in my confusion. Another thing is not having a strong relationship with Jesus. So that's a big thing is, yeah. um, I think what Daniel talks about a lot and just in general is having a strong relationship with Jesus. I didn't have that. And so I was I was going I was into Hinduism at the time when this all kind of really manifested as well and so uh, not having the a Christian background or not having Jesus in the center of your life will really also allow like the demon to manifest these gender mm-hmm. things so right um, and it's just like I I, another reason why I don't want this is like, I don't want my kid, like if I ever have kids in the future or just in general, I don't want like seven year olds to think they're pansexual, like they're LGBTQ gender right. or whatever, you know, like, I just think that's not healthy for like a 10 year old to think that like, it's not. I think kids <laughs> innocence needs to be preserved. And I think mm-hmm. like, if you realize like this whole thing that we're, like that, that happened to us isn't appropriate for like a child. And so like, why is it appropriate for someone our age even it's not it really isn't and like you said we're like we live in the world and the devil is the prince of darkness he's the prince of this world it's all run by him so there's this huge agenda that's being pushed especially right now they're putting it in children's movies and tv shows and whatever and i know that the enemy like children are vulnerable because they're unwillingly ignorant because they haven't grown up yet they don't know better they don't know anything you know what I mean? So it's easier for the enemy to attack a child than an adult, which is what he wants to do. Um, and like you said about being alone and how when you were alone, everything just got worse for you. It's just like what Satan did to Jesus. He isolated, uh, God sent Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights. And that is when Satan tempted him. He like The enemy came to him when he was alone at his most weakest and vulnerable points. And that's what happens to us. When we're isolated, everything crashes because we're not supposed to be. We're meant to have companions, friendships, families, the church body. We're supposed to be around each other and together. You know what I mean? So it gets a lot harder for us when we're alone all the time, when we're in our rooms, when we are got our headphones in, walking around in school, and there's literally hundreds of people around you and you don't want to talk to anybody. That's a problem. You know what I mean? Um, but for people in the LGBT, like you said, it, it's a matter of identity. And I, I think that, you know, I agree that we have to be honest with ourselves, but I really genuinely believe at this point that most people don't even know what identity is. They don't even know what sexuality is. Like they have no idea what's real and what's not, you know, they don't know truth. Yeah. Objective truth. Know. Yeah. You know, um, that lifestyle is all about feelings. It's all about how you feel and it's all about you. It's all about self. So it doesn't matter if you or me say, Jesus Christ set me free. He is the way, the truth and the life. They're always, you know, people are just gonna, they're not gonna understand because I don't feel like Jesus set me free. I feel like a man. I feel like I'm gay. That doesn't mean you are, you know, but they don't, they're not open right now to hearing that truth, you know? We live in that kind yeah. of world where we feel well, something. It's just like it. if there's a child abuser, it's not like, oh, like, as I'm a child abuser, like this person wants to abuse children, therefore, you know, it's okay. And it's exactly. kind of like, you know, it's just like, where do you draw the line? And that's kind of like the scary thing with the whole gender ideology is it's like, 
what's next you know now that we're allowing people to just do this it's like okay now we can just abuse children too because like apparently it's just okay to transgress like natural law so, right right uh, well you know even uh, like in in the community now like when i was growing up in the early 2000s it was just lgbt but now it's literally every alphabetical letter and probably numbers that you can think of in it you know um yeah. but as far as like the community in itself i they just need love you know, because at the end of the day, everybody in that community, whether they want to admit it or not, has been rejected by somebody or the, even themselves. They're dealing with a lot of issues internally that they don't want to admit, you know, and they need somebody like you or somebody like me who can relate and just say, look, I've been in your shoes. I'm not here to judge you. I'm here to tell you that there is a way out of this lifestyle if you want right. it, you know? Yeah, there's... um. There's a leading researcher in Canada who's got like a good book on this too. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's just like, it's people don't like, there's a, there's a way out of these things. It's just that people want to just, it's just such a monumental shift too, to like change your whole life like that, like change is, your name, yeah. take all these hormones. Like you can't, the, the effects of the hormones, like I did hormones for like two years, like mm -hmm. I it on and off and and then I took it for like another like six months after that and it was just like <clears throat> like you can't like, like reverse that effect on your brain like like thankfully we've got neuroplasticity and stuff but still like our our brains are altered by that and so I didn't um, believe that for the longest yeah I didn't want to admit that because when I was taking it I was in a relationship at the time and my girlfriend at the time would always tell me that it's the hormones making you angry and violent and all these things and I was like no like it's just me I'm just mad at you but I was literally crazy like if you could see my life in my brain and go back to those moments I was like I understand why I was in mental hospitals because nobody knew what to do with me you know and I didn't want to say the hormones are changing me in a bad way because I believe they were changing me in a good way you know yeah and I think it's just not the life like like god created us to worship him and like you said and to have families to worship him and so it's like there's a society that god wants yes and like we're we're so it's like we've been born into this world and we're living in god's house and it's good to follow like his basic guidelines like don't walk with the shoes on inside the house kind of thing mm -hmm. and it's just like that's kind of like the basic guidelines that god wants for us is um, and I, honestly, like the biggest thing is I feel so much more free, not having to go through this gender stuff anymore, like being free from it, like, like the detransition route is so much, you feel so much more free from your desires. Whereas when I was going under like the hormones and doing everything, like I felt so trapped, like, so, um, like I was just feeding all this like desires and all these, um, like I don't. I didn't feel that freedom in Christ. I felt that, like, I felt that, um, the trappings of Satan. Right. Right. And I think like, even when, like before Christ, I was in a really like dark place, but even, you know, once I gave my life to Christ, I'm not perfect. I've messed up a bajillion times. I don't know what my future right. holds. Yeah. We but... all fall down. Right. Like right. Peter was made mistakes after. <laughs> right. But it's, you know. it's now that I'm in Christ, it doesn't matter how I fall or what I do. I know like I'm loved. Like it's just not the same darkness because there's no darkness in him, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. So Someone said it nice. Like the, the tree that Christ hang on was like, is stronger than the one that like we tried to hang ourselves on. And mm -hmm. so like, um, yeah, like, I think like, the cross is stronger than anything so yeah. um yeah like i just you want to build your life on rock and it's the the gender there's no ultimately there has to be like a low there has to be like an axis to operate your life on and like the axis of operating on my feelings isn't building my life on rock it's building my life on sand right and it's what's led to like the half like the 50 percent divorce rate we have in our society right now which is really scary. So, yeah, uh, yeah like I just, I, 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 you know, I want to build my life on rock and I don't want to build my life on sand. And 
once again, like my confidence of being saved, like it's really sad. Like there's been pastors who are like during the AIDS crisis, like there was a guy who found out he had like a terminal illness and had like, uh, how like 15 days left. And then he basically like gave everything up and surrendered to God. But it's like, yeah. I don't want to be that person who waits till the last second. Yeah. It's, it's trans right. their whole life. And all of a sudden finds out they've got 15 days left. And like, that's not where you want to be. Like, even though that you can still do that, like, it's just not, I think right. we all have like, people in the LGBT community think like, Oh, like one day I'll just turn around. It's like, I think there's a book by CS Lewis and he talks about how, every time you say no, no, or close a door on God, that's that many doors you have to get through to get back to God. Yeah. So that's deep. Yeah. Like if I say no to God here, no to God there, I'm just building all these doors for my, like God will want to get to you right away. But like, those are doors you're piling on top of yourself to get to God, like get back to God. Right. So it's, right. I agree. Um, but I don't that's where most like, people would say, like, that's where most people would go you know, oh, it's God's fault or, you know, whatever, like they'd start blaming God when they put the doors in front of themselves, you know, by our choices, we do that. Um, yeah, a choice is like an action is also a, a saying something. It's not just only saying things to right. God. Like exactly. Every time you do that jab in your arm or every time you take that pill or mm -hmm. wear those clothes or go by that name, that's also saying to God, like, no, like my will. Right. So you've just, you've left that lifestyle and you are detransitioning now? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you just, you've committed your life to Christ and you know, like, this is what you want. Yeah. Good. Um, Daniel mentioned that you had, that you had some questions that he couldn't answer. Did you have any questions for me? Yeah. Just like, um, what, so you, you've been free from this for about a year and a half, you said? Yeah. Just about a year and a half what what did you what was like the main thing that got you free from it so i made a video about it but i'll probably do another one again um because i kind of went off topic in that one video but after god gave me that vision and i got delivered of those demons and stuff um i was still living with my ex at the time and so that was really hard like super hard but I don't know what I was watching. I was watching a YouTube video by some preacher that I don't remember. And he said something about temptation and how men who lust after women, you know, like straight men who lust after women, that you don't have to accept that. And so I developed this um, routine that I would practice. So in the beginning, whenever I saw a female that I thought was attractive, I would immediately look away. Like I would have to sit there and tell myself, look away because looking is fine. Everybody looks at everybody, but you look at people, but it's when you start staring at the person that you start allowing lustful thoughts. You know, if I look at somebody that I think is attractive for too long, I'm opening that door for the enemy to put lustful and, you know, just thoughts that don't need to be there in. So I developed this thing where I would immediately look away. And I would tell myself, don't stare, don't stare, don't stare. And eventually I did that for months. And then eventually it just like fell off of me. Like the chain just fell off. And the Bible says, I think it's James 4, 7, resist the resist temptation and the devil will flee. Um, that's pretty much what happened. I resisted temptation so much that the enemy was like, okay, this isn't working. And he just left me alone. And so eventually I could start looking at women and not even feel anything anymore it was just another female that was across the street you know mm -hmm. like whatever um go ahead so resisting was the main thing basically like resisting yeah. the, the temptation like, not giving in right just like the word says you know it's biblical that's what he said to do if we would just listen to him we wouldn't have an issue right um it wasn't easy at all you know but it, it took a while and it worked but then i backslid you know so it, it's not easy, but if somebody is committed and determined to get free, they're going to get free, especially with Jesus. You know what I mean? Um, but I also tell people that it's no different than any other sin. Okay. Sexual immorality is the type of sin that's worse because you're sitting against your own body. But when I mean sin in general, if like ex-alcoholic, ex-drug addict, ex-LGBT, ex-porn star, like it's all the same, you know? So it's no different than an ex-alcoholic walking into a bar, 
you know, he needs to resist temptation or maybe just don't walk into the bar. You know what I mean? We all have something in our lives that we have to learn to resist. And eventually you won't have to resist it anymore because it won't be there. Right. You, know? you can only, the, the bad thing only happens when you assent to the activity. So right. like as much as we try to say like, oh, the devil is like making me do this. It's like, yeah, like if you kill someone, like it was also your act, like you took, that person took the action to hurt someone. Like it, it wasn't right. fully the devil's fault. Like right. the devil it's, may have influenced him, but you know, yeah. Right. It's the same that, you know, how Jesus is knocking on the door of our hearts. Satan's knocking on the door too. But if you open the door, that's not his fault. You let him in. You know what I mean? And that's how people have to look at it. So um, that was my process in the beginning when it came to detransitioning that didn't take anything at all. Like I literally changed overnight. I, after I got set free, I threw away the testosterone. I, I went with some friends and got some clothes that were female clothes. Like I was fine with um, detransitioning after that. I got set free. So I had no desire to be male anymore, but the mm -hmm. lust for women, that's what took the process, which I just explained to you of, you know, looking okay. away. Um, and I don't deal, I don't call it a same sex attraction because everybody has attractions to people. It's lust at the end of the day, you know? Um, but yeah, that was my process. Just if I thought somebody was attractive, I would tell myself to look away and I would think of something else until eventually it wasn't there anymore. You know, um, how did I explain it? Kind of like the devil's whispering in your ear. If you start staring at somebody that you think is attractive the devil will start whispering in your ear like oh look at how look at how sexy they are or look at their mm -hmm. crotch or look at something you know and he'll start tempting you and then you just spiral and go downhill yeah you're right like whenever that's why like jesus says whoever looks at a woman with lust commits adult commits adultery so like i like i purposely keep my my eyes like level up whenever i'm yes. around like other yes. women just for that sake like it's yeah there's nothing to um there's a yeah like just being proactive about everything is really important, I think. Right. And I like that verse that you use because it says whoever. That doesn't mean, that means men and women alike. You know, he said, whoever looks at a woman with lust, you know, yeah. looking at each other with lust. But yeah, so it's not an easy yeah. walk. It really isn't. I just want to let you know, like, I know you're, you made up your mind. And I'm so happy that you, that you gave your life to Christ. Um, it's not easy at all. And people will, will say things to you and whatever, but at the end of the day, God is going to get glory. Like he is going to use you in a huge way to change the whole world. You know, he's rising up an army of people like you and I, so that we can all help each other and get out of this because clearly you can tell the way that the world is, the devil is pushing this agenda harder and harder and people are getting so confused with themselves it's getting worse, you know, so he, he wants to use us for sure. Yeah. What, um, so someone who's basically in the, let's say like someone who's in a raw situation right now, like they're fully, like, let's say like they they identify as transgender and everything. Mm -hmm. What would you say to that person like right now who would be in that? Like if someone comes across like our video and they're, they're all in that, but then they come across and have a conversion of heart. What yeah. would you say, what would be like the first thing for them to do? So if there is somebody watching who happens to be in the LGBT and they they want yeah, change in their trans life. Or, yeah, who wants to, who's trans and wants to change. Yeah. If they want change in their life, the first thing I would tell them is to remember that God loves them and that they're not perfect. That's the first thing, because we all beat ourselves up trying to reach an expectation that's impossible, which is why we have Jesus, because we can't be holy without him, you know? Right. Um, and I'd also say you're not alone. Everybody on this channel ha knows how you feel. And there's other people out here to help. You know what I mean? We've all been in your shoes, but you're not going to walk the walk alone. You know what I mean? And then, um, so did you, would you say it was that deliverance prayer, like the Jezebel spirit prayer that pretty much got rid of the, the, the transgender influence over your life? Um, yes, initially it was that day that I got delivered of Jezebel that changed. Um, so mm -hmm. after God gave me that vision, then I got delivered of Jezebel. And that's when I made that, like that choice. Finally, I was able to say like, I'm a woman, you know, like it just fell off of me. <laughs> so that was initially, um, mm -hmm. 
the big moment in my life where I got delivered of these demons that were confusing me, you know, but like I said, I'm not perfect. There have been moments when I backslid and I went back to that life, you know, I went back to that lifestyle. So once I went back, I basically opened the door again to the same spirit that was there before. So again, I needed deliverance after that. So it's not just deliverance that people need. They need to know how to maintain it, how to keep it and not go back to that lifestyle. And that's where the process comes in and resisting and staying in a relationship with Jesus. Because as long as you are praying and reading your word and you are in a solid relationship with Christ, there's no weapon formed against you that's going to prosper. But if you if you sin willingly, if you choose to watch pornography, if you choose to go and have sex with a dude and you're a dude, you're opening that door spiritually. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like you're, <clears throat> yeah, I, I'm like really careful with all like my social media accounts and everything just like, mm-hmm. um, cause all like the influences just like how it all just comes and pours into it's our crazy. eyes. Um, yeah, like Jesus says, like, if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. So right. uh, I'm really, like, careful how I expose myself to, the, right. like, whatever media or anything. And that's so, good. That's a fruit of the spirit. Yeah. That self-control, that's amazing because not a lot of people can do that. But again, it all comes down to a choice. We have a choice. Open the door or leave it closed and choose Jesus. You know what I mean? That's, like, the beauty of it, though, too, because if we didn't have that choice, then it wouldn't it wouldn't be like a free will. It wouldn't be like a, there wouldn't be that relationship there. It would just be like a, I don't know. It just won't be the same. It won't be as beautiful. Right. right. Like, would you rather, like the way I explain it to people, cause they believe, you know, like God forces us to be this way and we're created a certain way and we can't change. I just tell people, would you rather force somebody to love you or have them love you because they want to love you? You know what I mean? And that's with God. Right. He doesn't force us to make our choices we make our choices and then complain about it, you know, but if we choose Jesus, it's just a whole other world of amazingness. It's awesome sauce, you know? Yeah. It's like a a third of the angels fell from heaven because they have perfect intelligence and they're beyond space and time. So God gave them that test and then they fell. And that's like our life. We get this test by God and we want to rise. We don't want to fall. So Well, yeah, even even the angels have choice. Like Satan was an angel. He had a choice and he made a choice to be prideful and not repent. And look what happened to him, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah I just, I get scared for people who think like this life isn't a test. Like it's it's all about like- That's all it is. That's seeing like what, what we're going to choose, you know? It's like right now, it's like, let's see, like, you know, so- Oh my gosh, um, I can't believe you said that. That reminded me, somebody told me yesterday um, that sin is like a credit card enjoy it now and pay later and I like die yeah. laughing because it's real yeah you gotta repent and just uh mm-hmm. yeah repentance is super helpful for me like whenever I repent or just like ask for go to for, ask for forgiveness from God and just repent like it it's really helpful to you with like overcoming things but uh going back to what we were saying I think like for me a lot of it's just a, a praying to God got a lot of it's God's mercy and grace but also it's like my it's an act of will Mm-hmm. for me overcoming like the the gender struggles and, and challenges but then it's also prayer along with like god's grace and then right. um, seeing people like daniel or deliverance and things like that and getting that help it's a combination of things like i think i wouldn't try to like have anyone do one thing only like i would try like a multitude of things like like approach it from a holistic standpoint like health diet exercise like everything you know like just like attack it. Don't just like try to do one thing only. Right. And at the end of the day, it, it just comes down to Jesus or yourself. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and we ha- but I, like we live in a world where we are all trying to be strong for ourselves and be strong for other people. Like it's all about self, you know, and Satan is the God of self. So if you're trying to change yourself, you're going to fail every time because you can't change you. Only God can change you if you humble yourself right. and ask him to. Yeah, as, um, as he says, like, behold, I make all things anew. So, right. Um, yeah, honestly, Thank like you. when you get free from lust, like I've been doing a lot of praying lately and stuff. When you get like, I love being in that state of like freedom from lust. Like it's just so 
there's so much like our society is like everything is up is down and everything that down is up like for me like being free from lust is like um you know maybe i'm meant to be a eunuch i don't know but like i love being free from lust so yeah yeah like we all should be in that position and and that's why i say it lust is the issue you know at the end of the day because we're all lusting after something lust doesn't have to be sexual you can lust for yeah. food you can lust for music like whatever you're idolizing um, yeah just having like a very sober right like vibe is really helpful to like just receiving that jesus wi-fi yeah jesus wi-fi i love that you have to be yeah. sober-minded yeah. um did you have any other questions for me really quick or did you need prayer for anything at all um yeah i'd say prayer is like the main thing just like that's what daniel was talking about basically that one of the reasons for our conversation was just like any to just to clear any other residual um effects of like that lifestyle or any like spirit still there basically yeah um, did yeah. you are you struggling with any lust for men or with any doubts about going back to lifestyle or you just want to like make sure everything's good? Um, the, the, the desires still pop up every now and then yeah. for like the gender stuff. Yeah. So I would say that that's like the main one. But other than that. Um, Doing pretty good. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, um, with the desires, again, it's just temptation. It doesn't mean that there's a demon in there. It doesn't mean, you know, it, it could be, but I highly doubt it, especially since no, you I, saw like, I, My volition and self-control, like I'm able to be like, yes and no. Like, it's not like I'm going to like a mental health hospital. I'm like not yeah. in my own control. That's like, good. Yeah. I hi okay, so like, especially since you saw Daniel in Atlanta, I'm sure you're fine. Like, you know what I mean? Because if you're able to do all that and you're you're good in your relationship with Christ, you're fine. Like your emotions are good. You have the capability yeah. to make your own choices. That like that means you're not oppressed. There's nothing oppressing your your will. Like you're good. But yeah, I will yeah. say a prayer for you really quickly, just about enduring your temptation and whatever else the Holy Spirit brings up really quick. Okay. All right. So Holy Spirit, we invite you onto this Zoom right now, Lord. I ask right now, Jesus, that you touch Ben, Lord. I ask for clarity in his life, Lord God. I pray that you remove anything in his life that does not need to be there, anything at all, Lord, that is not of you. He does not want it there. So I ask, Holy Spirit, that you do what only you can do and set him free of everything in Jesus' name. I also ask, Lord, that you put your full armor over Ben and show him how to use it properly, Lord God, that he would be able to stand firm in the faith that no weapon formed against him would prosper, Lord. And I speak to the enemy and over his life and I say, you can't have him in Jesus name. This man is anointed. He is going to be used mightily for the kingdom of God. So I pray right now, Holy Spirit, that you touch Ben's heart, that you overwhelm him with your love, Lord God, and I also pray, Lord, for peace while he sleeps, Lord God, that no fear or anxiety would be over him, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Ooh, felt a little fire going on there. <laughs> Thanks. Of course, Ben. If you need anything else, just text me because you have my number. Yeah, yeah, I will. Thank yeah. you so much for reaching out to me. And hopefully I'll see you in Atlanta because I know we're going to be there next year. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, or hopefully. Uh... Yeah, so I'm, I'm up north more, but I was able to make it down um, during that time. Okay. But, uh, yeah, I'll look at your guys' schedule. But yeah. All right, Ben. It was nice talking to you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. See you later. See ya. All right, guys. That was very interesting. This is actually the first video that I've done since I've been absent for a while. So you're gonna have to excuse me because I don't even know what I'm doing right now. Um, but yeah, I'm very pleased with the way that things went. I really didn't know what to expect, but as you know, as you've heard through this conversation, Ben was somebody who was in the LGBT. Um, he was born male, he was transitioning into a female. He had some spiritual revelations and some crazy encounters with the Lord that just brought him back to repentance. and. Now he's living that Jesus lifestyle. Um, so I really wanna tell you guys really quick that if you guys 
are in that lifestyle and you don't know what you're doing, you're not really sure, you're, maybe you're seeking Jesus, maybe you're seeking truth, whatever it is, I'm here to help. Obviously the Lord's got you, but the Lord might send you to me or Daniel or Heather or whoever, but you can always reach out to me. Just bear with me. Okay. I get a ton of messages on many different platforms. So it might take me a while to get back to you, but I will get back to you. Okay. And I want to let you guys know that Daniel and the Supernatural Life Squad will be traveling. We have a bunch of trips planned. I will leave them in the description box down below. So make sure you guys go and visit Daniel's website, www.thesupernaturallife.org. So you guys can see where we are going to be and when we are going to be there. I know we have a California tour coming up. We're going to be in Texas. We're going to be in Brazil. We're going to be just we're going to be places. OK, so if you live in any anywhere you are right now and you need a touch of the Holy Spirit, you need deliverance from demons, you need life coaching, you want to have a conversation, you want to meet me or Daniel or whatever is going on, whatever you need, you need prayer for something. I don't know. But whatever it is, come to us, find out where we're going to be at and be there so that we can meet you. We can pray with you and whatever else the Lord wants to do in your life again. I apologize for any delay. I apologize for any lagging or anything going on right now because this was a very last second decision to do this video and I wasn't expecting it, okay? So just bear with me, all right? And thank you guys for all of your prayer, for all of your love and support. I know I'm dysfunctional. I know that I be flopping on and off sometimes, but the Lord is patient with me and that's all that matters. And surprisingly, you are all patient with me as well. So I really appreciate that. Um, I missed being on here. I miss doing everything. I love you guys so much. Jesus loves you guys. Make sure that you guys smash the like button. Okay, smash the like button so it gets pushed out so that everybody all over the place can see this video. It might help somebody. Comment down below and let me know what videos you want to see. If you have a challenge that you want me to do if you have a topic that you want me to discuss look i don't know what's going on socially in the world i don't have a twitter or a tumblr or anything like that so i don't know what's going on if there's a controversial topic or maybe lil nas is doing something again i don't know if there's something you want me to talk about or something that you want to bring to my attention to talk about leave a comment down below so i can check it out because i love to hear from you guys click that subscribe button and click the notification bell. Click that little bell so that you guys know every time I go live, every time I post a video. Also, if you guys want to know anything personal that I'm posting, click on the community tab. And that's where I will have links to Zoom calls, which I will be doing soon. The website's coming up soon. I have a lot going on, okay? Y'all know how it is, all right? I got a lot going on and a lot in the works, okay? So like, comment, subscribe, join, click the bell, all that good stuff. I love you guys. I don't got to tell you twice. And I will see you on the flip side.